Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, uh, the founders you've heard of and some you've never heard of, uh, P90X founder, Tony Horton. You know, I like to tell the stories, Bill, of like the biggest challenges in their career. And Tony Horton talked about how he made money as a street mime. Um, and before selling hundreds of millions of dollars of P90X, he would put his head on the street and that's how he made his food and rent money. Uh, and Baby Einstein founder Julie Clark talked about growing her company to $20 million with five employees and selling to Disney. But I thought the most impressive part was her beating cancer twice and her talking about that. And Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about how when he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no at the time. And all of us probably would have said no, he said to a punk 21-year-old kid asking us for, at the equivalent $400,000. So um, I am going to introduce today's legendary guest in a second, but this episode is brought to you by Rise25. I co-founded it with my business partner, John Corcoran, and we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners um, by helping you run and launch your podcast so it generates ROI. Um, it was inspired, actually, I was inspired a podcast from my grandfather who was actually a Holocaust survivor and him and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany, and they were the only people to survive in their family. You're wondering, how does that have to do with podcasting? Well, the uh, Holocaust Foundation interviewed my grandfather, and his legacy lives on because of that interview. And that interview is on my about page on Inspired Insider, um, and it just motivates me. Yes, like podcasting can help your business. But it helps you and your guests leave a legacy of knowledge beyond us living. And I, you know, just I watch that interview multiple times a year and other people do too. And so it really motivates me to help other people do the same. But I do credit podcasting to be the single best thing I've done for my business and my life because of the amazing relationships I've made. So if you have questions, I think everyone, like Bill would say right now, anyone who is a chiropractor, a dentist, or any professional should have a website and digital communication because that's the ultimate way to communicate. I think every business should have a podcast. So if you have questions, uh, email us, support at rise25media.com. And um, I want to thank Josh Long um, for introducing me to today's guest. And you can check out um, his Audible and Amazon, uh, his book on Audible and Amazon, Bottleneck Breakthrough. I've listened to it, loved it. If you want to find out how to fix your number one business challenge on my growth fast, which who doesn't, check out his book. Like who, who doesn't want to build, eliminate bottlenecks from their business, right? And so um, I'm going to let Bill talk in a second, but you know he needs no introduction. He's legendary in the chiropractic marketing education world. He's been helping chiropractors even before 1987, but 1987, I think, formally and i've been studying his his materials and his knowledge and education marketing for over 20 years myself and he just boils down complex things in a very simple ways to communicate and it's it's groundbreaking for any profession so i i say i don't care what profession you're in if you're in dentistry chiropractic anything see how he actually creates education and knowledge to um, help people understand complex things. So he has Backtalk, founder of Backtalk Systems, which are like his report, report of findings, magazettes that he invented. I was reading and over and over and over. He's founded Patient Media, Perfect Patients, um, and also Smile Marketing for dentists. So not just chiropractors and other professionals too. So Bill, thank you. Thank you. So... You know, there, there's so many things, and we'll go through a timeline and um, about your your career so that we can unpack some of the lessons learned. But, um, you know, in this day and age, you know, who knows when people are listening to this, but right now the U.S. and world is going through a, a bit of a crisis. And so I wanted you to talk mm -hmm. about adapting in a crisis for professionals and um, how what you think they should lean into in these times and in general. Yeah, well, uh, th this is an unusual situation. Uh, it's it's a one of we don't have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of 
history to look back on and see what, what we need to do moving forward. But um, I would say that, that number one is over-communication. Um, there are uh, people within your own family. There are people within your own business. And there are customers and other, you know, constituencies that um, are going through fear. And uh, we do not make our best decisions uh, when we uh, have our brain hijacked with, uh, with fear and uh, cortisol. So um, I think over-communication is the key thing. And I think it's important that you develop a point of view. What is your point of view of this? Are you saying that this is, the, this is uh, uh, finally the end, so now I have an excuse to retire? Or are you saying... Um, you know, uh, this is going to last three months. This is going to last three years. You know, what's, what's your point of view on that? And uh, once you have a grounding, uh, a point of view, then you can put together a plan that makes sense. And um, so everyone has a different point of view as to what's going on here. I happen to believe that, um, that, this, is, uh, that this is not uh, out of ordinary that something has caused the media to go bonkers and I think that probably most of us would uh, be healthier and uh, and <laughs> uh, keep our sanity if we uh, tended to tune out of the media and mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I think that the coronavirus this is a new one but we have had coronaviruses forever and um, uh, this is uh, uh, s certainly getting a lot of headlines but I think we've had worse uh, issues with the N1H1 or whatever it was and SARS and all the rest of it. So uh, I tend to uh, not get uh, wrapped up in the hyperbole. And uh, my go-to strategy is to bolster my own immune system. And I think mm -hmm. that would probably bode well for most people is uh, because after we do the flattening of the curve and, uh, uh, you know, staying in place and, and having the appropriate social distancing, um, <laughs> that virus is not All of us will be it's exposed still, at some point. It, it's still going to be here, right. Yeah. So what are you going to be doing to, uh, to make sure that you get through it? So, um, yeah, I don't, know that, I don't know where you want to go with yeah, that. Yeah, I wanted to see what have you seen, how are people adapting now? And what have you, I know you've had a lot of conversations with people, you know, and everyone's in different circumstances. How are you, have you seen people adapting to this? And what have you, what are some of the recommendations you made in maybe some of those instances? Yeah, well, one of the clever things that I have, have learned that uh, some are doing in chiropractic, that's kind of where my ear to the ground is, um, is uh, to, to avoid the congestion in a reception room. They're basically asking patients to stay in their car and uh, then they text the patient when they're ready to go so they don't have a lot of congregation there in the, in the reception area. Um, I, I think that, th that the other opportunity here, and, and you know, that's, that's what, uh, what the, uh, there are opportunities. And one in, in particular is to, you know, what are all the things that you'd like to get to in your business that you're so busy in your business that you don't get to work on your business? And I think that that's one of the things that I'm seeing a lot of creativity around in terms of, hey, I've always wanted to write that blog post about, yeah, you know, X, Y, or Z, or, you know, I've always wanted to, um, you know, kind of tune into social media and clean that up. And so these, there's some, there's some opportunities now to, to really, you know, work on your business rather than just simply being consumed by working in the business. So, you know, you were always a big believer in leaning into digital communication, even before this happened. So now people hopefully are motivated to maybe double down on digital communication in general for their practice or for marketing or whatever the reason is. What, what should people, you know, do now that they maybe should have done all along or maybe just do more of now that this is happening? Well, one of the things we're noticing <clears throat> with with websites, um, not so much of our customers, but um, many, many, many people are squandering incredible opportunities with their websites because the attitude that they've reached in, they've reached out to their website is, I need a website, get a website, check. And so they treat it like an entity, a thing. And uh, in fact, what it really is, is a digital bridge to not only your current customers, but your prospective customers. And one of the things that 
I think that many are guilty of is not being as revealing and then transparent on mm -hmm. their website as they could be. In fact, one of the most difficult things we do for our customers is we write their biography. Mm -hmm. uh, doctors, first of all, are not that great of writers. And then asking, being asked to write about themselves so they can publish it on their website is, um, th that's, that's a difficulty of 9.5. I mean, it just can't be done. So um, you, otherwise it turns out to be, you know, having the personality of a press release or a curriculum vitae. So one of the things that we uh, innovated in, in our business was we would uh, interview the doctor. And we have a set of pretty cool questions that we ask um, doctors that help provoke them to lower their guard, be more transparent, and really connect as individuals. Because, mm. uh, you know, it goes back to the old thing that you've probably heard is that, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And uh, part of that is showing up as a real person. And that's so counterintuitive to the mentality and the, uh, the, the club that uh, doctoring uh, is, is part of. And so um, one of the things we do is we try to, to, try to get folks to be real. And uh, because the, the website needs to create an emotional bond with the prospective uh, visitor. And you can't do that by showing off uh, uh, pictures of equipment or uh, sterile reception rooms with nobody sitting in the chairs and, you know, the whole thing like the neutron bomb look. And so hmm. uh, one of the things we, we do is we, we work very hard with the concept of conversion. You know, we, yeah, the, for the longest time we thought that what clients were coming to us for was to get good rankings on Google. And we had, a huge slap in the face. Oh gosh, this was, must have been five years ago by now, uh, where a doctor said, hey, um, uh, I'd like to cancel my service with you. And part of the um, debriefing process that we go through is, well, what is their Google ranking? And you know, what's going on here? Have they been adding you know, new patients as subscribers to the website, et cetera? And this guy had done all it ticked all the boxes. He was page one, top page one for his you know, key ranking words. And so I, I had the courage to call him up. I said, you know, what, what's going on here? Because we thought that the Holy Grail was top of page one. He said, you know, um, appreciate the top of page one, but I'm not getting new patients. And that, just, that, that one phone call opened the floodgates to, a, to dig deeper into what generally falls under the, the, the umbrella of conversion. What causes someone to say yes? What causes someone to pick up the phone? What causes someone to, to use that appointment uh, form and to begin care? And uh, we have put a, a lot of energy on our team into uncovering and ferreting out what are some of those, those issues, even, even down to the sentiment expressed um, in the meta tags and uh, the, the, uh, the text on, on the homepage. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of developed a science for us. So showing the human side, some vulnerability. Yeah. Um, what if, what's an example you see from, you've seen from, it could be from the past year, five years, 10 years, of a really compelling example that sticks out in your head of someone doing a really good job. And you don't have to name the person's name, but maybe the story. Yeah. Um, this, uh, the, the website, uh, the chiropractor that came to my, comes to mind is a chiropractor um, who I believe was in Denver. And he, um, he was kind of known as kind of a crack up, kind of a, a wild sense of humor. He always had a joke uh, every day, a new joke of the day kind of thing. And so people really kind of, you know, you either, you either like that in, in your healthcare provider or you don't. I mean, it, it's a very strong bifurcation point. But he had the courage to, uh, in one of, you know, when they did the photo shoot uh, with him of, of really just really doing cut up, you know, funny faces and, you know, weird stuff like that and allowed us to put that on his website. Hmm. And um, that's not for everybody. That resonates uh, with some people. That's his personality. Exactly. Yeah. But that's the whole point. You want to attract your tribe. And the only way to do that is to be revealing as to what you stand for. And I think a lot of people, particularly in the professional arts, 
um, have this mindset that if they can show up as beige as possible, uh, and not you know it round off all the corners uh, and be as as neutral yeah. as possible that uh, they will attract more people and yeah. actually it works the reverse yeah um, I totally so. experienced that first hand bill um, in my practice early on I would be more buttoned up and I remember it was a patient was like Dr. Weiss you just need to relax a little bit and I was like and my personality is, is typically relaxed and fun loving and joking, you know, and so I'm like, you're totally right. Thank you. You know, I was trying early in, in the, you kind of grow into that, you know, your skin a little bit. Right. So I totally, I mean, what you're saying is, you know, hopefully people realize that sooner rather than later. Well, I, I, for the longest time, thought that there was a particular classroom that uh, every professional goes to, and that's where they get the rod stuck up their rear end <laughs> to, to, to be stiff, you know, and to be uh, a non-person. So, um, of course, it, it's a balance. True. Like you want to, you want to be professional, but you also need to be human and vulnerable and all that stuff. So, yeah, I, and I probably need to err more on the you know, the human side and, and people gain the, you know, glean the professional side. So I think so. Uh, but yeah. again, that's personal taste. There are plenty of patients who want that button down, um, you know, emotionally distant professional. Um, and there are a whole bunch of folks uh, similarly who, who w would like to, to roll with you uh, as a real person. Yeah. And, and, and have a high regard for your skill set and your experience and wisdom, uh, but, uh, but, but fully appreciate the fact that you, you show up as, as a human being. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk about what you do at Patient Media, Perfect Patients, but I figured um, if you can give people just a brief um, overview, highlight, um, and you could start wherever. I mean, I have in my notes... 1987, Dr. Parrish was a big turning point, and maybe some of the things that happened. And I have 1987 is a big turning point. 1999 is a big turning point. And there's a, there's a a bunch of maybe turning points. Um, could you give a, us a brief, just um, highlight of the evolution of your your businesses, and then we can dig a little bit deeper. Well, I had the good fortune of working in various media. Uh, uh, outlets. Um, I worked uh, initially when I was going to to, Cairo, to uh, college. Um, I, I got an internship at a radio station, and that was in '73, I believe. And um, found the radio far more interesting than the book learning at college. So after about a year and a half, I got out of there and uh, did radio full time for a year or so, and then moved to to Colorado, and then. Couldn't get in. You, you, you can't really move from a, a, a thousand watt daytimer in Olympia, Washington to a 50,000 watt KOA. I and mean, there's a pecking order. It takes a career to, 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 to transpose those, those size of markets. So uh, I did remember back in the day that the really cool radio commercials came in these little five inch radio reel-to-reel uh, -reel boxes and they had these nice labels on them from an ad, from advertising agencies. And I thought, well, maybe I could talk my way into an advertising agency, which I did. And I remember my salary was $400 a month. I netted $316.50. And my rent was 150. I mean, I'm not even sure how I survived, but I did. And got did that long enough to get a portfolio together to work for a larger ad agency. And one thing led to another. So I've always kind of been in the in the media at, in one way, shape, or form. And um, started working for a film production company uh, in Colorado Springs, and then worked for a, a digital audio recording studio. And uh, at some point, uh, you know, working for this film production company, we, these two chiropractors moved in next door to our offices and they wanted to, they wanted to harness this newfangled thing called the VCR for patient education. And uh, the idea being that you could, you could, you know, introduce chiropractic principles uh, consistently uh, and avoid repetitious explanations. And so they, they hired our company to do that. And uh, so to find out about what chiropractic was about, because I had probably what most people considered to be kind of a normal cultural notion of chiropractors were kind of on the dodgy side and, 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 uh, and all. And in back in the seventies, I think that that was probably uh, truer, but um, 
so I went to this seminar that these two guys put on, these two chiropractors put on, and uh, three days. And I was totally blown away by the principles that they were sharing with it because I'd never heard them before. I'd never heard that, you know, the master system, the nervous system controls everything. And interference in the master system will cause your body not to function right. And, and everything they said resonated with me and made sense with the experience I'd had in my own body. So came back to the Culver Springs and said, I think we need to help these guys create their videos. And so one thing led to another and we worked with Peter Graves to, uh, to, uh, he was the host for the first, mm. for the first video. And, um, he had come off of mission impossible was considered highly trustworthy because of that. For some reason, I'm not sure why. And he <laughs> left, he, he left our uh, studio recording to, um, our week uh, filming the video uh, and went over to shoot winds of war in the United Kingdom. And so mm. um, we kind of had him at a, at, at a, a, where he was reinventing his career actually. Mm. And um, did that for a while. And one thing led to another and uh, kind of got burnt out on film production, to be frank with you. And after five or six years of that, and, uh, and I was thankfully fired uh, by my, uh, by my boss who, he and I have I've been really great friends since, and I just really thank him for giving me the courage. Well, I didn't have the courage. He kicked me out of the nest so I could go do something that made sense. And mm. because film production company wasn't, uh, that's, that, that's a great skill to have, but that's not what I needed to be doing. And so you I had really thought, thought Bill at the time, like you, you had already kind of thought like, I want to be doing something else. And then that was kind of the impetus to do something else at the time. Well, I think most of us want to do something that's meaningful. And right. what I discovered was that I, that chiropractors at that particular, this is in the mid eighties, um, were the, the brochure rack was, you know, Harry hemorrhoid and, you know, uh, just nasty stuff, you know, that was just so non, uh, savvy when it comes to communication and, you know, from this ad agency background and working with art directors and all this stuff, uh, uh, I had, I had an eye and, and the profession needed something in the eighties and, uh, one thing led to another. And so my background kind of led me into creating patient education materials, uh, for chiropractors. Mm -hmm. And that was back talk systems. That's right. We, we, I, I hooked up with two other chiropractors and we formed a company called Backtalk Systems. And the reason why we called Backtalk Systems was, was because uh, Michael Parrish, uh, one of the, the, other, the other three princi other, other principles, was um, hosting a daily live call-in TV show about wow. chiropractic. Wow. And he, um, we met because he hired me to help improve the quality of his, his, of his little TV show. And um, he was on one of the new UHF stations or whatever, and was just really killing it with, with generating new patients. And uh, so we call it Backtalk Systems, and um, we created our own set of videos, and then we created uh, report of findings documents and all kinds of brochures, the whole thing. And we I did that for 10 years. What was a, a very popular product? Because you had poster, I mean, you have posters, you had, you know, a port of finding, you know, a lot of different products, educational yeah. products. Do you remember what was, cause you, you had this, like I said, in the beginning of the interview, this amazing knack for creating this complex, simplifying this complex explanation um, into a gr like great analogies. Like I remember there's tires and like, just yeah. what are some of the ones that stick out to you during that time period that were popular that you well, came up with? The, the probably the most popular products were still video back then. Uh, people, um, you know, by the nineties, people knew how to hook up their VCRs and, um, and then of, of course, <laughs> because in the early days they didn't, you know, uh, so we had to in, include instructions on in how to set up your VCR, but you know, we did DVDs and, uh, I would, that was, you know, show this video on the first visit, show this video on right before you explain their x-rays and what you're going to be doing to help them and show this video, you know, two weeks in, two months in or whatever, when patients are feeling better. So that was probably the big, the big hit was that. The second thing that we kind of instituted uh, through Backtalk System was um, uh, what we call the Magazette, which was a combination of a magazine 
and a gazette because the newspaper in Colorado Springs was called the Gazette Telegraph. So we combined magazine and gazette into a, something called a magazette. We just made up word. And uh, that became the report of findings folder yeah. that, that patients would get all of their documentation from the examination and report of findings in. And that, that was something that we invented uh, yeah. back, back then. Oh, yeah. I could picture it. Yeah. I've used it. Um, so thank, thank you. you for that. Um, then what was next? There was a, the next turning point seem was 99. Is that the next, um, well, actually I, I think, I think it would be, it would be instructional to go to 92, which okay. was at, when I considered going to chiropractic college and, um, because it was a little frustrating to create these tools and to see them not used fully or exploited to their fullest potential. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I need to become a chiropractor. And I really took it seriously. And um, so I, I um, called up a mentor of mine here in, in Colorado and said, asked if I could come by and, and, and cause I got an idea and I wanted to bounce it off of him. And he uh, sure come on over. So I said, Hey, and he's a chiropractor by the way. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about um, becoming a chiropractor. And I was wondering uh, what, which of the schools that you would recommend that I go to. And his bright, cheery smile turned into a dour, sour frown. I said, he said don't become a chiropractor. I said, so what do you mean? I thought, you, I thought he would be delighted that I was joining the team, right? He says, no. no. He says, if you become a chiropractor, you're going to have a practice. Yeah, I think I think that would be a lot of fun to be able to apply these ideas and and have patience and it'd be, it'd, it'd, it'd help people. That'd be great. He said, no, 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 no. He says, he says, if you become a chiropractor, you will have one technique that you will think was superior to all the others. I said, yeah, I'd I'd like to find out what school to go to to find out how to learn how to do all of this stuff. And anyway, he says, he says, he says Bill, you just don't get it. He said. He said, if you become a chiropractor, you will have a practice. He says, if you can stay outside of chiro uh, chiropractic, have one foot in chiropractic, one foot in the real world, he says, you could have a huge practice. Hmm. So he convinced me to take on the huge practice. And 39 years later, um, that's it, it, it. Sometimes it feels like that. Sometimes it doesn't. But um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad that that I have been able to kind of serve maybe as a translator. Yeah, totally. In the real world and and the chiropractic world. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So you decide, okay, I'm forging ahead. I'm not going to chiropractic school. Yeah. So we made a rash of products at 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 Backtalk and. Um, I won't go into the details, but at, 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 at one point, I, I just didn't feel like um, um, I, I, we went from three business partners to two business partners. And um, I reached a point where I felt like, um, to quote scripture, that I was unequally yoked uh, with the business partner. And it was time for me to, I was healthy enough to go off on my own. And so um, one of the smartest things we had done was create a buy-sell agreement which I would highly recommend to anyone who has a business partner, even if uh, you, you've known each other since uh, birth. Uh, but you need, you need a way to have what some people call a scripted train wreck. That is, you know, how, how, how do we end this if I want out? How do we end this if I die? How do, I, how do we end this if I'm incapacitated and what have you? So we'd figured that all out. And yeah. um, um, I pushed the button and it was, it was, it was a cutthroat buy sell, which meant that whatever price I offered him, he could buy me out for the same thing. Mm. That's how, that's how it went down. And so I walked out uh, of that closing uh, of the sale of that business on uh, April 20th, 1999, about four miles north of where the shots were ringing out at Columbine High School. So mm. that's, that's kind of my imprint of that whole uh, scripted train wreck. Um, but uh, that's, that's when I started over and uh, I didn't have customers. I didn't have uh, products on, on a shelf in a warehouse. Uh, didn't have anything. I literally had the freedom to start over. And so it was, as Charles Dickens would say, the best of times and the worst of times. So uh, that was probably the, the biggest turning point in my professional career mm. was 
it was in, in 99. What did you do next? Well, um, you know, I knew like the that blank slate is good, but it's also tough. It's like, well, it I could do anything, but exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I had fully intended to start over if in fact he wanted the old business. Um, it would have been more convenient if I'd had the old business, but as it turned out, it was probably the, the right thing uh, in, in the big scope of things. But I had already begun the work to um, think about, well, what, what do you name this new company? And uh, that's where I made a huge mistake. And, you know, what products would we have and, and all the rest of it. And um, so, I, I, I mean, I worked... Uh, as I, as I told one person, I said, I was working half time, uh, 12 hours a day um, <laughs> on, on, exactly. on, on the new business uh, to come up with, you know, our videos and our brochures and, and uh, uh, you know, just the next generation. And I could now learn from what I'd done before. Say, okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to call it subluxation degeneration. I'm going to call it spinal decay. And, you know, there was just some things that I was able to leave behind by starting over. And so um, it really shakes up the cobwebs and blows out the carbon. And I highly recommend that to just about anyway, to reinvent yourself from time to time and, and, uh, and, and look at the world through fresh eyes. Uh, Is that time where did, was it called patient media or was there? It was called patient media yeah, as soon as I started, started over. Yeah. Uh, called a patient media. And the, the objective was that I would be creating uh, this type of patient education material for many disciplines. Um, dentistry, uh, along with naturopaths and, and other, you know, vitalist uh, type uh, healthcare. Um, it, it didn't turn out that way in that um, I discovered that uh, dentistry uh, doesn't, uh, you can get free brochures from Procter & Gamble or Palmolive or Colgate or what have you. And so the notion of selling uh, brochures to dentists seemed to be a kind of a headwind. And uh, same with posters and some of the other tools that I've done in chiropractic. So the, the whole, because dentistry has expendables and there are vendors that provide those things uh, as kind of a service, uh, I found that that didn't, end, uh, did, didn't pursue that, but, uh, but really dug in deep in chiropractic and tried to, tried to reinvent things and um, had some success, um, but uh, ran out of money. Uh, so with patient media... What are the most popular um, offerings now? I would say that <clears throat> all of the materials that we uh, create surrounding the report of findings, um, we're just finding that that uh, that seems to be the sweet spot of where people are willing to. Chiropractors will spend money on things that they think hold the promise of producing new patients, and um, things that can help a patient understand what chiropractic is and follow the care program. And uh, that's, that's pretty much what we're doing now is, is those two, two categories. Yeah. And then you shifted um, the dentist when you said you ran out of money for the dentist portion. Well, I ran out of money at patient media. Uh, okay. I'd, I'd gotten a, um, a check at the closing um, that I thought would uh, get me through the new product creation for uh, 30 months. And um, it lasted nine months. Hmm. Slight miscalculation. Wow. Yeah. So then what do you do? I mean, obviously it's still alive and thriving now. So it's Oh, yeah. yeah we, <laughs> we got through it. Um, but, um, it wasn't pretty and, um, probably the, the most important thing from that. And I think this probably is worth sharing with other business owners is that what I discovered that I was so stressed that um, I had, uh, that I'd read enough success literature to know that one of the ways to deal with uh, stress is to increase your physical ability to accommodate stress. Hmm. And that meant uh, vigorous physical activity. And so I began, uh, I began jogging and I'm at 7,000 feet. So the first time I went out jogging, I ran 
900 feet. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Like I need an oxygen tank. <laughs> that's right. And I walked and then I ran and walked and I ran and, um, you know, made it back. And, you know, the endorphins kicked in and I could give a rip about the fact that I couldn't pay my bills, hmm. you know, for an hour or two. Uh, but, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night um, wondering how you're going to make payroll and you can't tell your employees that you're, you, you don't know how to make payroll because you need them more than ever to be able to help you get through this crunch. And so you really feel isolated and alone. And, uh, but religiously I'd go out every day and go running and, um, um, it got to the point where, I don't know, two, two months or so into this little exercise, um, I was running, I don't know, five miles a day and coming back, uh, not winded, I could carry on a conversation and I was in pretty good shape, you know, pulsed down in the fifties and, you know, it was, it was, uh, very healthy. Uh, but, um, I, I still had a lot of stress and, um, on one particular run, uh, I ran the same trip. Uh, I'm out in a rural area, so I'm running on these country roads and I made the same loop every time. And I remember, on one run, I heard a voice saying, you know, Bill, based upon how well insured you are, you'd actually be worth more to your family dead than alive. Mm -hmm. And um, had a kind of a ring of truth to it, you know, that would certainly solve um, all the financial issues uh, based on the insurance and all. And um, so I kind of played with that for a couple of runs. and. Um, developed an idea about how I would go about doing that uh, so that it would look like an accident so that um, it would, would uh, involve as few people as possible and uh, all the rest of it and uh, came up with a plan that, that uh, I thought uh, could be pretty effective. Of course, I didn't do it. Um, but about that same time, I heard another voice on one of the runs and this voice speaks in very short declarative sentences and um, said, um, you know, Bill, you've made patient media about you. That was it. That was all, that was just like out of the blue. And, um, hmm, running along, what do you mean I'm making it about me? And I started, I, I just, it just really stayed with me. And so I started becoming more mindful of my language and I would catch myself saying, so how do you like my new videos? Or how do you like my new posters? Or, hey, have you met my staff? And I started hearing me, 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 me a lot. And I'm kind of embarrassed now to even relay this, but I remember where I was I remember the moment because where the light was, the sun, the hair. The, I remember I say, I'm going to make patient media about chiropractors, not about me. It's about being in service. And I felt a, a weight lifted for some reason, but, and I, I can't tell you what day that was, but I suppose if you checked the phone records, you could figure it out because suddenly the phone started ringing. And I got a call from a very important uh, consultant in chiropractic. Hey, will you come speak to my group and show those videos? And you know, I think I, I think our our, our 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 clients need these videos. And it's, it's like the light, the floodgates mm -hmm. opened up. Mm -hmm. And I finally realized then that I wasn't in the patient education business. I was in the chiropractor success business. And so that's the lens that I look through. And, you know, all of that startup debt is gone. You know, we're, we're in great shape. We're moving forward. And, um, and it, it's been a real blessing. But, but you know, it was, it was a couple of dark, pretty dark months there for a while. Bill, first of all, thanks for sharing that. That's an intense, intense story. So I'm, I'm, you know, really appreciated that. And I, especially if anyone's listening to this, when there's a crisis going on, I, you know, I think everyone can appreciate the stress of any business owner and what they're going through. So, you know, that's, uh, thank you for sharing that. And I love what you said about 
you know, um, floodgates started to open up when you were in service. And maybe that's what all of us should think about in, in any crisis or right now is when we start to get stressed out, well, how can we be in service to others in general, you know, and take the focus off ourselves? Well, yeah, you know, one of the things that, again, it goes back to self-talk. Um, one of the things that I encounter frequently with chiropractors who are going through a rough patch is that the self-talk to themselves is, I need more new patients. It becomes a mantra. I need more new patients. More new patients solves all problems, right? Oh, That's, it'll yeah. solve hangnails. It'll solve uh, <laughs> cleaning your toilets. It'll do everything for you. Um, and it's true that uh, enough business will cover up a multitude of sins. No question about it. But uh, what happens when you say to yourself, I need more new patients or I need more customers or whatever it is, what happens is that the universe acquiesces and gives you a need for more new patients. And so I recognize that in myself. And so one of the things I started doing as a mantra was, who else can I help? I mean, I would say that to myself mm. uh, uh, 20, 50 times a day. That's great. How else can I help would be another way that I would say it. Um, and uh, because I work at home, uh, the other uh, mantra that I would frequently repeat to myself is, what's the most important thing I can do right now? Hmm. Because it's so tempting to get ahead of ourselves, you know, two weeks, two months, two years out. What's the most important thing in the next five minutes that I should be doing? And um, those, those, uh, those mantras, those self-talk declarations, or ask, actually questions, um, were very, very helpful in, in keeping me on track and being, having a service uh, mentality. Yeah. Yeah. And so people can, you know, I want to talk also about um, perfect patients and what you do there, but, you know, from the patient media side, um, you know, the, you have reports, posters, video, audio, all sorts of things from front desk related things um, and uh, anything else on the patient media front that we should mention before talking a little bit about perfect patients? Oh, sure. I mean, the only thing probably is that um, one of the things that I've done uh, that I love doing is uh, doing uh, one hour telephone consultations. And I make the distinction between consulting and coaching. Um, I have a coach. Everyone needs a coach. A coach is about accountability, about maximizing and optimizing your performance and, you know, kind of urging you on from the sidelines and helping you think in new ways, which I distinguish between that and consulting, which is what I typically do, which is about short-term problem solving, um, getting uh, uh, new points of view when you're trying to, you know, when you're at a crossroads and you need some, some, some help with making a decision. Um, uh, because I don't, I, I don't want to give someone a can plan, but I will help them reach the conclusion that that is beneficial for them. And the, and I've been doing that now for gosh, I don't know, ten years or so. And uh, the fee is nominal and just enough so that people pay attention and might actually act on what we talk about. Right. Um, if people don't but, pay, they don't pay attention. Yeah. Uh, that's been my experience. Yeah. I mean, I would do it away. I do it for free if I could. Uh, but the, it would be doing the customer or the. Totally. Totally agree. A disservice. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So there is, you know, there, there is a tab on the patient media site. If you go to Headspace, uh, which is appropriate, and then uh, there's a drop down chiropractic consulting, and there's, it looks like you have the distinction there between coaching and consulting there. That's right. And I imagine people can email. I don't know if you want to to say the best email or just send them directly to that website. To, they can, they yeah. need to re probably read how, how the gig works mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. set the agenda and there's some other ground rules. It's not, yeah. not a big deal, but uh, then they, they just basically, you know, set up a time that works convenient for yeah. both of us and off we go. Yeah. To get on the phone with you for that amount of time for that is a absolute steal. So yeah. I would contact him before he comes to his senses and raises his prices <laughs> <laughs> actually. So you should, so I should raise prices. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I'm not going to say it because okay, I'll probably book a call it. with you so you can raise it after I've, I, I'm grandfathered in. <laughs> but um, yeah, so check that out. Um, coaching and consulting. I love the distinction there. And so perfect patience. Yeah. When is perfect patience? When is that born? That came 
Well, if you go back to the beginning, it came, it started in 1997. Mm -hmm. I was speaking in Hobart, Tasmania to the Australian Chiropractic Association. And I was doing a one day seminar. And uh, one of the things that they asked me to do was to do the after dinner talk. Um, everyone's eating rubber chicken and they want <laughs> someone there to, to, uh, to yabber for a little bit. And, um, so I did that, and in the audience, of course, I didn't know this, but you know, you're in this ballroom, darkened, um, with all these, you know, twenty rounds of people sitting out there, and um, a fellow by the name of Steve Anson was is sitting there uh, at one of the rounds uh, with uh, his spouse, who's a chiropractor, and um, heard me speak. And I did a 15, 20 minute talk on, um, it, it was pick up on gerrymanders, uh, four arguments against the four arguments for the elimination of television. I, I was, I was doing my rant about uh, being anti media and, um, uh, he shared similar ideas as it turned out. He, he resonated with what I, my talk was. Of course, I didn't know that and, and all, but, um, Time passed, uh, and he was in the process of creating a website for his spouse, uh, for her practice. And he, he, she says, "Well, go ahead." And so he got it, got all the stuff together, and and hey, I need content for this website. And who does content? How do I get my hands on content? And he remembered that converse, that that talk. Well, Esteb has context, so he calls me <laughs> out of the blue. In I want to say May of 2004, and he's We're still got this, in the early internet days at that point. It was, you know? but but at that stage, I, I mean, I was delighted because all the other patient education resources in the analog world had already kind of partnered up with someone in the digital realm, and uh, so I was kind of the last one without a dance partner. And he said, uh, hey, I want to uh, do this website, blah, 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 blah. And we talked, uh, I mean, this guy, thick Australian accent, and which, you know, we Americans love. And, uh, but we talked for an hour on the telephone. Uh, and this is a landline. And so that was an expensive call um, <laughs> back in that day. And, um, but we just really hit it off on the phone. And, and uh, so I said, hey, I'm going to be speaking in Auckland, New Zealand in September. And that's not exactly halfway between Colorado and Perth, Australia, which is where he, he lives. And uh, he is, is maybe, you know, you can fly over and we can, we can talk. And so he took me up on that. And for two or three days while I was recovering from jet lag, we sat in my hotel room and talked and talked and talked. And we'd read the same books, had the same value system. Um, we, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that that uh, a chiropractic website wasn't just brochureware; that it needed to be interactive, and uh, on and on and on. And you know, we just really, really hit it off. And uh, uh, so that's kind of the the formation of what became known as as perfect patience. Um, so now was, people, it's a hard domain to get. It feels like you must have, you know, perfect patience. That's a great uh, website name. Thank you. Yeah, and, and someone already had Perfect Patient, which they've since uh, sold to us. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a, a good a good name. So people can go there and they can essentially get their own website. Um, and it looks be I mean, if you look on their site, there's beautiful looking websites, and more importantly. Um, obviously, like you mentioned in the beginning, it helps with conversion because you could see at the top, uh, is, you know, rec they have all the elements to actually schedule an appointment. So not only does it look good, but I'm, I'm sure the, it's been optimized for conversion as well. Um, on this, this is specifically for chiropractors, the perfect patients. And it, yeah, and, and other allied um, healthcare that's in the vitalistic realm on uh, naturopaths, uh, acupuncturists. Um, massage yeah that sort of thing yeah yeah and so people can easily get their website up and running with content and all the uh, are there any you know through your journey of perfect patients features that you added because of your discovery I'm sure it's evolved perfect patients and the sites and what you what you produce for people has evolved um, in the present state what have you found to be you've added in because you've listened to you the audience that they have found it's valuable 
Well, <clears throat> no. <laughs> um, you know, if I know it's going to produce a good answer, Bill, so go on. <laughs> well, it goes back to the the um, the Henry Ford quote. You know, that if I'd asked people what they wanted, they want a faster horse. Uh, and we, there's a Steve Jobs quote that goes along the same line as well. So, one of the things that we decided from the very beginning and which was somewhat controversial, uh, particularly amongst our team, was that we decided that we would refuse to match other website companies feature for feature. Uh, that there is this belief that more is more. And what we discovered was that, yeah. that like most things, there's kind of an 80-20 thing going on. And totally. that what we wanted to do was we wanted, if if the feature did not, help get a patient or keep a patient, it wasn't part of the platform. That's simple. So people pummel us for, oh, you need this or you need that, or, you know, this guy down the street, they're offering this one, and then, you know, and, and we just decided that, no, that, that's, that's a shiny object, very attractive, uh, but we're not going there because it's not going to produce the response. It's just, it's just one more child you have to feed and update and keep alive 100%. and it's not doing yeah. anything for yeah. your practice yeah. so from time to time we've had some some come to jesus uh, conversations with our clients about this very issue that yeah. when we talk them down off the ledge they they get it and yeah. uh, for the most part uh, totally agree yeah we have the same with the podcast clients is like we have a, what's called an roi filter okay if it's going to produce roi well, consider it. If it's not, don't do it. And the same thing goes with your websites. Listen, if it's not serving the mission of your website, which is conversion and, you know, uh, uh, essentially conversion, getting someone to, to call a book an appointment, then we shouldn't include it. Don't clutter it up with things that, you know, are going to clutter it up. So I totally agree and it resonates. You also have on there services. So you offer different services, not just the website. Right. Well, because we recognize that there's five elements to successful digital marketing. You know, the website obviously is the hub, most important of all. You have to have traffic to that website. That's SEO. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a, a reputation, uh, that reviews are more important than ever today. Um, you're going to need to be involved in social media to a certain degree. We're not real f keen on social media because, again, it doesn't really produce new patients. It tends to cultivate your current um, community, but it it, it our research shows that it doesn't really produce right. new patients directly and then of course email so those five things if you get if you get all five of those uh, firing uh, you, you're up to something um, and so that, uh, that they can do get email marketing within the service as that's well. right yeah yeah that's cool and content yeah yeah we we do um, two blog posts a month and we do a patient newsletter to patients once a month. Love it. Yeah. So check out perfectpatients.com and then the dental side of things. Yep. Smile marketing. Same thing. Same thing, but smile marketing. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is specific to dental dental professionals. That's right. We have a couple of dentists um, that are, that are in that, but for the most part, it's, it's, uh, it's typical dentists. Mm-hmm. Bill, first of all, I want to, I have one last question and, um, but before I ask it, just thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing your journey with me and everyone else. And it's been, you know, really, um, opening and helpful, especially okay. during what we're going through, um, whatever people are going through right now, whenever they're listening, but right now, um, you know, constantly trying, needing to adapt in any type of crisis mode. So I appreciate your perspective and advice on that. Um, so the last question is um, more just in general about when you look back, you know, I always ask because it's an inspired insider and you talked about like a really low moment for you as you were going on those runs and how you pushed through that. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, on the flip side, what's been a especially proud moment for you on this journey?
You know, I'm, I'm not sure that I would call it pride um, because the f- fall comes after that. But um, th- what was particularly inspiring for me happened a year ago. Um, almost a little over a year ago now. Um, I have really had a really good friend, um, chiropractor in Yakima, Washington, uh, James Milliron. And he and I and his wife, Gina, we met when we were both involved in speaking on a seminar in Surfer's Paradise, Queensland, Australia. It's a wonderful place, it, just as great as it sounds. And we were doing a seminar there and we got to know each other and we, we came fast friends. This was B1988. And so um, he, he was kind of a sounding board for me um, in terms of chiropractic. And he was a special person who um, passed away um, uh, last uh, a year ago, September. Glad and um, yeah. And, and um, I was one of seven individuals uh, who was invited to s- share a few words, uh, which I'd never done before at a at a life life se- uh, you know s- celebration meeting, which isn't the point. Uh, but what was the point was that because of James's service, because of his heart, because of his love for people and service to patients. For his life ceremony, they they had to rent the convention center in Yakima, Washington, wow. for the 500 people in that community that showed up to say thank you and goodbye. And that has stayed with me ever since. And um, gosh, if I could ever... Um, wield that sort of influence and to uh, share that much love uh, with that many people. I mean, that would, that'd be a a full life. And um, that's, that's what I, that's what I keep my eye on now. Hmm. What was, what was the lesson you learned from him? Live life to the full because life is a gift. He would say life is a gift. I mean, that would just, that was his, his deal. And, his dinner table always had a guest. Um, there was, a, he just grabbed life uh, to the full. And um, he, was a, he, he, was, he was a renaissance man. He was a poet, he was a horseman, he was a sailor, he was a chiropractor. Um, he was, uh, he, he was a, a wine aficionado. He was, he, was he, he, he just was gentle. And um, he was a chiropractor's chiropractor. Hmm. Bill, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone should check out <clears throat> patientmedia.com. They should check out perfectpatients.com and also um, smilemarketing.com. Any other places we should point people to online? If you are a dentist or a chiropractor and you actually want some, like, almost, almost done for you stuff to actually you know, convert and, and help your practice, check out those sites. Any, any other places, Bill, we should point people? Well, you know, I would love to have a conversation with anyone who's made it through this hour and I'm extremely available and uh, would love to get your emails and questions and we'll, we'll talk, you know, it's, uh, I'm here to serve. Should we just point people to the contact on the website or a specific email? Okay. Yeah, or just bill at patientmedia.com. I mean, that's okay. or bill at perfectpatients.com or bill at smilemarketing.com. Uh, same deal. Cool. So, Bill, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.